This man couldn't get rid of a troublesome headache plaguing him. When his wife examined him, she had to quickly call the doctors after finding something disturbing. John Harris had a restless night, tossing and turning in bed. He was unable to find comfort due to a very terrible headache. Sarah, his wife, and a seasoned doctor woke up sensing his discomfort. She pulled him close, asking him what was wrong. When he told her about the headache, she quickly administered relief drugs to help him sleep, planning to investigate further in the morning. John Harris was a 42-year-old botanist who cherished his life studying nature's plants. His childhood passion for botany led him to pursue it academically, earning accolades and awards for his contributions to the field. When he returned from a demanding expedition in Borneo where he researched crossbreeding and the healing properties of antioxidant-rich plants, he had no idea he was on the brink of a startling discovery. The night's restlessness was unusual for John. His recent trip to the jungles had left him physically exhausted yet intellectually stimulated. He had encountered the antioxidant-rich plant he sought, known for its potent healing properties when consumed. As he lay awake, his mind raced with thoughts of his findings and their potential impact on medical science. Unbeknownst to him, John's return journey to Maryland would indeed mark the beginning of a new chapter in his research, but for a different reason than expected. Mid-flight, his excitement to reunite with his wife was dampened by a sudden wave of illness. Intense fatigue and a throbbing headache plagued him. Arriving home, John's condition didn't improve. Sarah initially attributed his symptoms to jet lag and prescribed medication for relief. Little did she anticipate the gravity of what lay beneath John's deteriorating health, a mystery that eluded even her seasoned medical knowledge. The next day dawned with a semblance of normalcy. John, feeling temporarily better from the medication, embraced Sarah warmly before she left for her hospital duties. However, the respite was short-lived. As John settled down to analyze his Borneo research findings, excruciating headaches returned with a vengeance gripping him in a vice of pain and confusion. That same night was no different and left John writhing in pain despite Sarah's efforts to ease it with more pain relief. As a doctor, she grew increasingly certain that his headaches and extreme fatigue were not mere jet lag or stress from his recent journey. There was something deeper at play, and she knew she had to uncover it before it escalated. Watching her husband suffer filled her with a sinking feeling, prompting her to hold him closer and offer what comfort she could. She resolved to take him to the hospital the following morning for extensive tests and examinations, determined to do whatever it took to alleviate his suffering. The next morning dawned early, Sarah busily preparing everything for John's hospital visit. The previous night had been rough with little sleep as she tended to John and tried to help him relax amid his unbearable pain. Upon arriving at the hospital, Sarah coordinated with her colleagues to conduct a battery of tests on John, aiming to uncover the root cause of his persistent headaches and fatigue. Blood work, CT scans, and MRI scans were ordered, each revealing nothing alarming. Yet Sarah couldn't shake off the feeling that something was amiss. The results showed unusual anomalies and activity in a part of John's brain, but nothing that explained the symptoms. The mystery deepened, leaving her puzzled and determined to delve further into finding answers. She knew that John's ailment wasn't simply due to stress or a common headache. Despite the scans showing seemingly harmless brain activity and minor movements, the absence of any clear cause interfered. If the scans had revealed something, even a serious condition like cancer or a brain tumor, at least they would have a direction to focus on. The uncertainty of not knowing intensified Sarah's anxiety. She insisted on redoing the tests, hoping for a different outcome, but the results remained unchanged. This only added to her confusion and frustration. She struggled to pinpoint the underlying cause of John's debilitating headaches and exhaustion, feeling helpless despite her medical knowledge. With each passing day, John's condition worsened, much to Sarah's distress. Seeing her husband in such pain and witnessing his personality shifts deeply troubled her. Despite being a doctor herself, she felt powerless in the face of his deteriorating health. She stood by him, determined to support him through his journey to recovery, knowing that she was his rock and the one he relied on during this challenging time. Weeks passed with Sarah tirelessly seeking answers from specialized doctors and hospitals, all to no avail. Frustrated by the lack of progress, Sarah decided to move her focus onto the days before the arrival of the first symptoms, hoping to find some clues. She delved into John's expedition notes and photos from Borneo, hoping to find a trail amidst the botanical research he had conducted. While it seemed unlikely, Sarah's intuition urged her to explore every possibility. As she sifted through the photos of John's research, Sarah's attention was caught by a peculiar plant documented deep in the Borneo jungle. Though initially unsure of its significance, a nagging feeling urged her to dig deeper. 
Researching the plant's properties online, she stumbled upon obscure articles and blogs discussing parasitic worms found in reptiles known for their mind-altering effects. The discovery sent shivers down Sarah's spine. Could it be that John had unknowingly encountered these parasitic worms during his research? The pieces started to fit together, explaining the unusual brain activity seen in the scans and his worsening condition. Curious, Sarah delved deeper into her research, not knowing where it would lead. What she uncovered was disturbing. The plant harbored parasitic worms transferable to animals and reptiles. This realization struck Sarah with a new possibility. Could it be zoonotic? Had John ingested contaminated food or parts of an infected animal carrying the worms that caused the symptoms? With a growing sense of conviction in her theory, Sarah approached the lead doctor, laying out her findings and drawing connections between John's symptoms and the exotic plant's potential parasites. However, the doctor was skeptical. No worms had been detected in John's brain during the scans, and if he had truly ingested a contaminated piece of meat, he would have suffered from stomach pains first since John was adamant that he had been feeling perfectly fine before the flight back. This possibility was excluded. That day, Sarah came home with a nagging thought in her head. Why was John only suffering from headaches and no other symptoms? She knew that his pain came from his brain, but what if she could find clues on the outer parts of it, namely his head? When she found her husband sitting on the sofa with his head in his hands, looking pained and dejected, she felt her heart break. It was time to find answers, she decided. She picked up a magnifying glass and approached him, determined to check every single inch of his head. However, she didn't even use the glass because when she pulled his hair back, she immediately found what she was looking for. With a startled scream, she jumped back in horror and quickly ran to fetch her phone. John looked at her in disbelief, wondering what might have scared his wife like that. However, she told him not to look at himself in the mirror and advised him to keep very, very still. Sarah called the lead doctor in John's case detailing what she'd found on his head. This time, there was no disbelief, and he immediately put her in contact with Dr. Ania, a renowned expert in tropical diseases. Upon hearing Sarah's theory, Dr. Ania told her to bring John to the hospital right then and there. On the doctor's examination bed, John's head was checked again, and there it was, a big black hole that had served as an access point for the worm to make its way into his brain. John was shocked and disgusted to hear the news and immediately asked why no one had noticed that before. However, his long, thick hair had hidden the wound from the eyes of the doctors and nurses who had performed the brain scans. Since it had already healed by the time he had come back to the States, it hadn't even left any traces on the medical tools used for general examinations. Thankfully, there was good news coming his way. Dr. Ania confirmed that she had encountered similar cases involving zoonotic parasites and that she knew exactly how to get rid of them. But before they could proceed with a surgical extraction, the parasite's presence had to be confirmed. The procedure involved the delicate process of extracting brain tissue to examine for any signs of parasitic infection. Sarah listened intently to Dr. Ania's explanation, her mind racing with the potential risks and benefits of such a procedure. The idea was daunting, considering the potential consequences if things went awry. However, the potential for finally uncovering the root cause of John's illness outweighed the uncertainty. So John was prepared for the delicate brain biopsy. The surgery was tense, but ultimately successful. The following hours were agonizing for Sarah as she waited anxiously for the biopsy results. Finally, with a mix of tension and hope, Sarah saw Dr. Ania signaling her to come to her office for the analysis results. Sarah couldn't ignore the grave expression on Dr. Ania's face, and fear gripped her as she entered the room. As Dr. Ania began to speak, Sarah's worst fears were confirmed. The brain biopsy revealed that John was infected with a rare parasitic worm from the plant he had encountered. It was a shock, even though Sarah had initially theorized about this possibility. The parasite must have entered his system through a small wound on his head, making its nest inside his brain. The news hit her hard as she realized the gravity of the situation. There was a live worm growing in John's head. The revelation brought a rush of emotions for Sarah shock, disbelief, and a deep sense of urgency. The activity detected in John's brain, previously dismissed, was now understood as a symptom of the live worm. It was a situation unheard of, a medical rarity that posed a significant challenge. Sarah's mind raced with questions and concerns. What were the risks involved in removing the parasite? Would John face consequences? The weight of responsibility for her husband's well-being became even heavier as she grappled with the reality of the diagnosis. 
The medical team discussed treatment options, considering the delicate nature of the procedure needed to remove the live worm. Sarah was torn between hope for John's recovery and the daunting task ahead. Time was of the essence, and every moment counted as they prepared for the challenging treatment plan. Thankfully, Sarah received a surprising piece of good news from Dr. Ania. There was a potential treatment, an anti-parasitic drug still in the trial phase. Additionally, they would need to surgically remove the worm from John's brain. Sarah's face brightened with hope at the prospect of a treatment plan. With one last hurdle to overcome, she eagerly anticipated the end of this challenging journey. She longed for the return of the healthy and lively John she knew, missing their conversations and joyful moments together. She was relieved that they had finally diagnosed his ailment and believed that John would soon be feeling better after the surgery. The day of the surgery arrived. Sarah, along with the medical team, donned their surgery attire and prepared their tools for the task at hand. It was a unique and groundbreaking procedure requiring the removal of a worm from a human brain. With careful and meticulous cuts, the medical team used a pair of tweezers to reopen the wound on John's head and extract the 8-centimeter-long spring-like red worm that had been residing in his brain for two months. The surprising discovery revealed the parasite to be the Ophidoscaris robertsi roundworm, commonly found in carpet pythons. Everyone in the room was taken aback by the sight of the unusual worm a first-of-its-kind discovery in a human brain. Sarah, although shocked, was relieved by the successful surgery and the unexpected revelation. As weeks passed, John recovered with Sarah faithfully by his side. He was ready to be discharged, but the news of a worm residing in his brain for over two months left him in shock and amazement. Despite the surprise, he felt immense pride and gratitude towards his wife, who had tirelessly worked to uncover the cause of his ailment and ensure his recovery. The discovery not only brought relief to John, but also fueled his passion for botanical research, knowing firsthand the unexpected complexities of nature. What a shocking story. Have you ever encountered a rare medical condition? Share your experiences in the comments section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.